All right. That is called the equitable right prior to the sale. If you owe me 10 grand, what's fair that you pay me? 10 grand. Equitable. If there's a law that protects you, that's statutory. That's how you remember the two. Before you pay what's fair, after the law protects you, that's statutory. Cool? <clears throat> Christina, go ahead and hit mute on your microphone. Sorry. Thank you. That is under the enforcement of the tax liens. Now, there is a second type of tax. I told you the first one was called the ad valorem tax. That is called an ad value. It is based upon the value of the property. There is a second type of tax that you will see that is called a special assessment tax. Sometimes they're called a local improvement. This is typically a one-time tax for something special that's happening to your property. Now, it's a one-time tax. You may pay it over several years because of the number being so big they're not going to force you to pay it one time. They will assess it one time, but let you make the payments over a period of time. Let's talk about it and you'll get it. So let's assume they're going to take our housing neighborhood that we're all in right here and put new sidewalks in or a new sewer system. Guess who's paying for that? We are. And how do we decide how much to pay for it? Well, it's real simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of us. We split the fee nine ways. Because we all are getting a betterment to the property. And we all, in theory, are getting an equal betterment. New sewers. So we all pay for it. Now, that number that they assess us, let's say it's 20 grand. It's assessed one time, but they're going to come in and go, you know what, Raymond? We're not going to force you to pay your 20 grand this year. So we're going to have a special assessment tax of $1,000 for the next 20 years. So it's one assessment just paid out over time. So don't get confused. It's not assessed 20 times. It's assessed once, probably spread out just to make it easier on you. Now, if your special assessment was 900 bucks, they might say, yeah, we're just going to add it this one year and you'll pay it off in one year. This year, you got an extra $900 because we put new sidewalks in. Cameron? So say that person like leaves before the, that 20 years is up does the like the next person moves into the house like yes yeah. so that's important for us that's a good question that's a good lead, lead in that's important for us because if that person say after 10 years sells the house and we've got a buyer that's looking at it and we see the ad valorem tax is a thousand dollars but then we would also see hey you've got also 10 more years of this special assessment of a thousand dollars a year so that could potentially cause a problem in the form of well the buyer says I'm, i can't buy or it's too expensive because of that or you can negotiate that price in the sale hey i'll take over but i want you to finish paying the 10 grand you can negotiate it but yes it would add on to the new person why? Because that tax is specific to the property. The new owner leaves, he's not going to finish paying the 10 grand because it's not attached to the person, it's attached to the specific piece of real estate. All right, I'm good. If that guy pays 10 years and moves away, he's not going to 
pay 10, continue to pay the next 10 years because he got rid of the property. All right. And that, spe that special assessment is divided that way. Nine of us, we divide by nine. Now, there's a second way they may divide the numbers. Let's say they're going to put a sidewalk in and I have a double lot, so it's twice as wide. You guys got a single lot. I, since I have a bigger benefit, because I've got two yards, that means I got twice as much sidewalk, I may pay twice what you guys pay. So they would in essence say, Raymond, you're two times a thousand. The others are one times a thousand. So they could say you share equally in the benefit. Everybody just divide by nine and pay it. Or they could say somebody gets a better benefit because of whatever. So they're going to pay a different rate. A sidewalk is the easiest way to understand that. I got two yards. I got 300 feet of sidewalk I get to, kids get to play on. You guys have one lot. You only got 150 feet. So I'm getting twice the benefit. I may pay for two shares rather than one. Cool. So over on page 294, they talk about the mortgage, which we've touched on. That's the voluntary specific lien or equitable voluntary specific lien. Means the same thing because since there's only one of them, only equitable. Sometimes they don't mention it. The mechanics lien's involuntary because you chose to have the work, you didn't pay for it. The mechanics lien can be placed upon you based on several different dates. And I'm telling you now, I am not a contractor, never have been. Anybody here have a contracting company that does this? Because they can place the mechanics lien based upon like the date they drop the material at their house. They could paste, place it based on the date that they last came to your house and worked on it. There are several different ways or dates that they can use as the date because it has to be filed within a certain time frame. All right. A lot of times when somebody buys a new home, the contractor or the general contractor will use what's called a subcontractor. And before that house can be sold, the subcontractors have to verify they have in fact been paid by the general contractor so that the subcontractor can't file a mechanics lien against the new owner. Everybody make sure you understand what I just said. If I buy a house from a builder and all of a sudden the lawn care company comes in and says, hey, the builder never paid me, I'm filing a mechanics lien, guess what property it would go on? The one I just bought. That's not fair. I paid the full 100000 to the builder for the house, but I'm getting this mechanics lien. So before I buy the property from the builder, you would get what's called a notice of non-responsibility, meaning the mechanics have told us, yes, we've been paid. The builder would provide this proof to us Yes, I paid all my subcontractors, so there's not one that can actually come and file a mechanics lien on you. Cool? All right, let's move on. Now, I told you at the beginning there were two types of liens. We've talked about the first one, which was called a specific lien because it was attached to your real property. So the other side of this coin is this term 
called a general lien. So think of liens as uh, two trees. They got the general and they got the specific. We've already talked about the specific. So let's talk about the second side of this tree called a general lien. A general lien is always and only involuntary. That's the only version of a general lien there is. It's an involuntary. Someone has done it to you. There are two of them. There are two of them that get their value in either equitable or statutory value. Once again, it's the same as the specific. The value is derived either by some fairness or money or some state rule. An equitable one is what we call a, and I think someone mentioned this earlier, judgment. It is placed upon you by a judge in a court action. And this is where the term judgment comes from. And all of the general liens, here's the problem. They are attached to your person and real property. Remember, specific lien was only attached to the real property. And like Cameron just noted a minute ago, when I move away from that real property, that lien would stay with the property, like that assessment. If I get a general lien, it is placed upon my person and all the real property. So now it goes against me, my dog, my basketball hoop, my house, my motorcycle, my car, my boat, my RV, my jet airplane, my silverware, a Frisbee in the garage, all right? It attaches to everything. It is a general lien. So what ends up happening is, let's do the example. I have an English bulldog and somebody hit and kills my bulldog and I take him to court and I win for $10,000, that's the equitable portion, it would go against their whole real and personal property as a judgment against them. And that judgment would attach to everything they own. So you got a $100,000 house, you now have a new $10,000 lien on it. You got a $5,000 sweet Trans Am that's free and clear. It now has a $10,000 junk lien against them. Oh, well, that's minus five in equity. Let's do it this way. You got a new $10,000. So it would get attached to everything. Got a million dollar airplane get a new $10,000 lien attached to it. And I would attach it to everything. Now, I jokingly said, like your Frisbees and your kids, technically that may be true, but we don't track the sale of those. So it usually only attaches to things that we would attract the sale of, like, uh, motor vehicle titles, so boats, cars, RVs, uh, trailers, motorcycles, all of that. It would attach to all the real property because we track the sale of that. So your your personal residence, any rental home you got, vacant land you farm, any of that. So technically it would attach to everything, but we only usually see it attached to things that we track the sale of. But here's the cool thing. It attaches to all of them, 
until you pay me off. So your house is worth a hundred grand. You now have 110. I blocked the sale of your house. You have a $5,000 Trans Am, but you now owe 10 grand on it. It's literally upside down, blocked the sale on it. You've got a million dollar airplane, but it's worth 2 million. So when you sell it, they pay the first one off. Now you get your 10 grand. And what happens is I go back and get take off all the liens on all the other stuff. So now it unblocks the sale of those properties. 